A better effort for the Minnesota Wilds. Yet another loss, this time against the Toronto Maple Leafs for the Minnesota Wild. We recap the game and some of the big takeaways that we can draw going forward. Plus, what might be the reason for Capo Kakinen having better success than Cam Talbot right now? All that and more today on Locked on Wild. <laughs> You're Locked On Wild, your daily podcast on the Minnesota Wild, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to another episode of Locked On Wild, your daily Minnesota Wild podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Lockdown Wild your first listen every day. And just as a reminder, Lockdown Wild is free and available wherever you listen to podcasts. On today's episode of Lockdown Wild, we recap a 3-1 to one loss for the Wild to the Toronto Maple Leafs with a couple of things to pull from the game. We'll examine the face-off differential that was decidedly in Toronto's favor, as well as a look at uh, a potential tell for what is making Capo Kakinen have more success right now than uh, Cam Talbot. And we'll look at some of these struggling centers for the Minnesota Wild here as well. My name is Seth Topol, host of Locked on Wild, your veteran captain of the show with uh, a decade's worth of experience covering your favorite Minnesota sports teams and now focusing all of my attention on your favorite hockey team here in the state of hockey. Happy to be with you for a Friday edition of the show. Unfortunately for the Wild, another loss this time to the Toronto Maple Leafs and tweeted it out before the game started saying, please do not be the team to uh, get the Maple Leafs back on track. They had been struggling uh, coming into the game and uh, they still have some uh, very, very good players. Austin Matthews. Still one of the best in the NHL. And, you know, some of the, it, it is a frustrating loss for the Wild, but uh, Toronto, no slouch and uh, a very good team at home. And so for the Wild, I think the important part was that uh, we saw a better effort than uh, what took place against the Ottawa Senators. And despite a uh, more than healthy amount of turnovers, and a pretty glaring deficiency in the face-off department. I think we did see that. Um, it uh, it took until the first. Um, it took until nine minutes remaining in the first period for the Maple Leafs to register a shot. The uh, the wild penalty kill I thought played uh, played very well with some big kills on the top penalty uh, power play unit in the entire NHL. So. I thought uh, I thought there were certainly some positives to take away from the game. Yet, you know, I can understand why people are frustrated with uh, with where we're sitting, heading into a home and home with the Calgary Flames. Now, with uh, yet another loss on the record, so understanding all around. Yet, uh, what we're going to continue to do here on Lockdown Wild is uh, just take a look at the game objectively and uh, continue to push forward into this season. Now. A couple of big things to uh, to analyze from this game. Of course, we're going to talk later about um, a little bit of a tell. I think I've noticed that uh, that is separating Capo Kakinen from Cam Talbot's um, their success. So uh, we'll talk about that. We'll also talk about if the Wild maybe need to look at uh, juggling their centers around a little bit with uh, some struggling performances going on with uh, a couple of the centers in that mix. But let's start by talking about one of the most glaring deficiencies in uh, the loss, and that was the fact that the uh, Minnesota Wilds won 19 out of 63 faceoffs, 19 wins, 44 losses for the Wild in the faceoff circle, and uh, not too single anybody out in particular. Nick Bugstead, two wins, two losses. Matt Boldy, a win and a loss. Connor Dewar, six wins, four losses. 
Jewel Erickson Eck, five wins, 13 losses. Freddie Goudreau, four wins, seven losses. Ryan Hartman, one win, 15 faceoff losses on that top line. And then Nico Sturm had uh, two losses, no wins. And so faceoffs are not something that I typically like to point to because in the last two years alone, we've seen the Wild win um, a substantial amount of games when they have lost the faceoff battle. Now, obviously more close than in uh, in the game here against the Leafs. And so it uh, it does bear repeating that you're kind of playing with fire if you are a team that uh, cannot get those face-off wins. Uh, it just gives the opponent that many more opportunities to establish zone presence or to move out of their own zone and push the puck up the ice. And for a team in the wild who trailed 2-1 to one for most of this game, for them to have critical face-offs down the stretch that they just could not win, certainly factored into the uh, final outcome. If you can win a couple of draws in the uh, the Leafs zone, uh, that could have maybe given the Wilds an opportunity to score the tying goal and send this thing to overtime. But you lose enough of those face-offs, and I think the, uh, the opposing team kind of gained some confidence in that, hey, these guys can't win a face-off to save their lives. So uh, we're going to just continue to uh, to kind of get it done here and, you know, not being able to win face-offs on the power play and uh, allowing Toronto opportunities to uh, to send the puck down the other end of the ice. It all just kind of adds up. And if you're not on your A game, the other team, especially the caliber of teams that the Wild will be contending with as the season goes on, they're going to make you pay for it. And so it uh, it's just one of those, I think, issues that this wild team has dealt with in the past that kind of reared its ugly head in uh, in this game. So, you know, it's I mean, it was a it was a struggle for everybody. Jewel Erickson, who has been relatively good in the uh, the face off circle, having an awful night. Um, on his uh, by his own standards, um, Ryan Hartman is was actually doing pretty well with faceoffs before the game uh, last night, and so you know some of it is just Toronto being better in the circle. But at the same time, we talked earlier in the week about some patterns that are starting to kind of show themselves here during this skid and during the second half. Faceoffs might be one that uh, that needs to be monitored as well. And you know, if you're if you're trying to keep this uh, this playoff um, playoff push going, might be a good idea to get somebody in that can uh, can help with those disparities in the faceoff circle. And so we again kind of turn our attention to Mr. Claude Giroux. Yes, I know not. Um, a true center, but still winning faceoffs at a 60% clip. How many faceoff wins would the Wild have needed to potentially get that game tying goal last night? Maybe Drew could have given enough uh, to the Wild, for the Wild to at least tie it. So faceoffs, a concern. But again, this team has shown that if they keep the faceoff disparity close, they, uh, they can still win. And ultimately, at the end of the day, Wild were still in it again until the end. We saw the, we've seen the empty net magic kind of come down to earth a little bit. But uh, nonetheless, there was a two to one game up until the, the end of it. So despite getting throttled in the face off circle, uh, the Wild still very competitive once again uh, with uh, a pretty darn good. Toronto Maple Leafs team. So despite the loss, still some positives to take from the game, including, I think I figured it out. I think I have figured out what is causing Capo Kakinen to, uh, to play so much better than Cam Talbot here recently. We'll see if we can figure out the tell that, uh, that has led to this discovery next here on Locked on Wild. 
it is the month of February, which means your New Year's resolutions may have already been put in the garbage. But if you are trying to eat better so that you can look better, Built Bar is, of course, here to help. If you are looking for a way to freshen up those Built Bar flavors that you have grown so accustomed to, may I recommend the Puffs. If you haven't tried them, you're missing out on one of Built Bar's best tasting bars. Puffs are the first ever protein infused marshmallow. They're fluffy, they're marshmallowy. They're not just a protein bar, they're a treat, and they are, of course, covered in 100% real chocolate. If you act right now, you can go to built.com, use the promo code LOCKED15, and you'll get 15% off of your order. Again, use the promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at built. Dot com. Continuing today's episode of Lockdown Wild, and again, thank you for making Lockdown Wild your first listen every day. Once your first listen of the day is done, make sure to head over to the Locked On Now podcast. Nightly recaps of every NHL game with analysis from our local experts, including yours truly. Locked On NHL is free and available wherever. You listen to podcasts. So Capo Kakinen in that last night gave up a couple of goals, but shot from the uh, the top of the uh, top of the zone by Austin Matthews gets one by for uh, for a goal, and then a two on one give and go between Austin Matthews and Mitch Marner. It's a, that's a tall order for any goalie, and you know the more that I think about it, we we had two pretty similar goals uh, scored against both Cam Talbot and Capo Kakinen. Obviously, the uh, the Shabbat goal from the top of the zone that was deflected past Talbot, certainly not great, but uh, I can only imagine from Kakinen's point of view, seeing that puck kind of up in this area and trying to kind of decide okay is this above is this above the uh the net is it below the net well, and having the reaction time to uh to make a decision there um I, I don't know with players that good and with that kind of a a slap shot coming at you i don't know there's a, there's much you can do and i certainly don't have a ton of issue with uh, with that goal being given up and you know the give and go as well, uh, those are just a couple of the best players in the NHL, and um, Kakinen certainly made plenty of uh, of other saves throughout the game that uh, did not lead to Toronto goals. So I thought his performance was good, and I think I figured out what is leading to him being on the track that he's on right now and Talbot being on the track that he's on right now. And it all comes down to positioning and reacting. So watching Capo last night, I just was pretty impressed with how well he tracks the puck. And uh, it seems like he always knows where the puck is when it's out on the ice. And I think if you as a goalie are able to do that, it gives you an opportunity to get in such better position to play the puck because you are tracking, you're tracking and then reacting. So the shot is, uh, is getting close to, uh, to where it's going to be delivered by the opposing player. And you're still, you know, you're not committed to a position on either side of the crease or either side of the net. So you still have time to react to, you know, deflections or um, anything right in front of you. Whereas if you commit to a spot to where you think the puck is going to end up, well, then you don't really have a whole heck of a lot that you can do to try to adjust if a puck is, say, deflected right in front of the net or um, if a player ends up, you know, faking like they're going to shoot from one spot and uh, shooting from a different spot. So it just, it seems like Capo is doing a, a really good job of staying with the puck. And uh, when it gets to where the opposing player is getting ready to shoot, that's when he's starting to try to figure out, okay, where do I need to be 
And um, it's just, I think it's leading to much better results. And that might be a, that might be a simplistic explanation for, uh, for what is leading to, you know, Capo's success. And certainly there are other aspects that go in with that, but looking at what Talbot has done over his last few starts, I mean, look back at the, uh, the senator's game, the game winning goal for the senators, which again was tipped before it got to Talbot, but he is, I think, I think he was, and don't, I would have to go back and look, but I think he was in position early and uh, then the tip just got by him. But there was another goal during that game in which Talbot sprawled out to uh, try to corral the rebound and was not able to. And the puck came free and uh, the Senators were able to just tap it past him. You know, we had uh, another example of that in the Winnipeg game where he was uh, in front of the net went to go make a big save on uh, one side of the net and the puck came free. And uh, then the Jets were able to kind of ram it past him. So it just seems, and I th- I'm sure that's due to, you know, the results over the previous handful of starts starting to kind of, starting to kind of wear on you. And it's, it's no different than any other sport. You get to where you are, uh, not performing up to a level that you've kind of expected or that you have held yourself to in terms of a standard and uh, you're not hitting that, it gets frustrating. Uh, I myself am a uh, pretty regular golfer. So I equate it like this. You're you're getting up onto the tee box and let's say the first tee shot that you hit goes left into the trees, or into the rough. You then mentally are like, okay, well, I need to do something to, um, I need to do something to accommodate for that. So do I need to aim a little bit right? Do I need to open the uh, the club face a little bit? A- any number of things. And you just have this checklist that you go through. Do I need to do this, or this, or this, or this, or this, or this, or this? And maybe it works. Maybe you end up hitting the ball now into the right rough. And you just, you get into your head, you get into your own head instead of just going up to the tee box and just hitting the ball. And wherever that ends up going, then you'll take your next shot from there and so on and so forth. And so I don't think it's anything physically and I have seen suggested on uh, Facebook and Twitter that uh, that Talbot maybe is still dealing with the injury that uh, that knocked him out of the Winter Classic and uh, kept him out for a handful of games uh, this season as well. Maybe there's some of that, but I think what we're seeing is that uh, that Talbot is just he's he's over trying to overcompensate a little bit, trying to get to the puck before the puck is off of a player's stick or he's he's trying to commit to a spot too quickly as opposed to what capo is doing where he's just tracking the puck and if the opposing team is able to get it by the wilds defense well then he's reacting to the shot at that point and while that seems simple just just look through you know any sport the mental side of things is is equally as important as the physical side because if you start to kind of get in your head, you put yourself out of position and your performance suffers because of it. So hopefully we haven't seen any word as to who is going to start against Calgary on Saturday. Uh, Wild go Calgary Saturday in Calgary. And then on Tuesday, the Wild will play the Flames at home. So home and home against Calgary and uh, haven't seen anything as to who is going to potentially start for that, uh, that first Calgary game. I would think based off of his performance last night that you probably go with Capo, but I've been wrong before in that department and certainly will be wrong again. 
So hopefully that is something that Talbot can kind of pull from what Capo has been doing uh, in his starts this year because, as uh, as a lot of people pointed out as well, Talbot has had moments where he's looked really good this year, and he was very good last year. And in order for the Wilds to get through the rest of this season and still be as successful as they were in the first half, they're going to need both guys. So if they can get Talbot back on track, that's going to help this team get back on track as well. We will finish today's show by discussing the centers. It's been a little bit of a rough go for Mr. Ryan Hartman. And so we'll discuss whether or not the Wild need to switch up the center lineup a little bit to finish today's episode of Locked on Wild after this. Football might be over for this season, but basketball is in full swing for both pro and college hoops. From all the latest odds, totals, player performance props, to where the next fired coach is going to land, BetOnline.net is the number one spot for all of your sports betting needs. BetOnline remains the best spot for all of your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. And it's not just basketball. BetOnline.net is your source for hockey, boxing, and UFC odds and every other sport imaginable. So head to their website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and the action. You can find all of that at BetOnline, where the game starts. Final segment of today's episode of Lockdown Wild. Again, thank you for making Lockdown Wild your first listen every day. And uh, just as a reminder, Lockdown Wild is free and available wherever you listen to podcasts. Just one more kind of big topic to discuss from uh, last night's loss to the Toronto Maple Leafs. And uh, it deals with some of the center play that we've seen um, in recent games. Now, Freddie Goudreau did have the lone goal of the game for the Minnesota Wild. It was by far their best in the faceoff circle winning four and losing seven. And, you know, I've, I've preached pretty much all season in that these line combos have been chugging along, have been doing their thing. And now we've started to see a couple of players fall back down to earth a little bit. Ryan Hartman is one of them. He has uh, not been nearly as Scoring-wise, at least, not nearly as vocal as he was early on in the season. And you know, we're starting to see his projected goals dip a little bit to uh, right now just over 30 goals at 32 goals uh, for the season. His um, his goals, I mean, he had four goals in uh, January, but went a four-game stretch. Uh, without a goal right up until the All-Star break and has scored one goal in the second half. So for Hartman, you know, not only that, but some of the face-off uh, numbers not as good for him as well. And so was just kind of thinking after the game, if we are going to continue uh, to see that lineup put together. Now, obviously, Kaprizov and Zuccarello, hugely charismatic duo on this team, as is Kevin Fiala and Matt Boldy. And as Freddie Goudreau continues to click for that second line, there really isn't a compelling argument to move those guys around. Now, obviously, the Eric Sinek, Felino Greenway line, uh, the fact that uh, they have not given up, at least at this point, they have not given up an even strength goal when they've been on the ice together this season. So maybe not a compelling reason to break that lineup, but I'm just, I'm wondering here, just hypothetically, if the Wild were to switch Jewel Erickson Eck and Ryan Hartman, how different would both of those lines produce? Would Jewel Erickson Eck be able to get the whole line uh, back on track 
and I, I say back on track as if Kaprizov and Zuccarello haven't scored in an eternity. Those guys are just like freshly coming off of lengthy point streaks. And so you're going to have games like that every now and again. Uh, every team has, you know, the highs and lows of the season where some of your best players maybe get on a, a huge scoring run and um, just can't be stopped. And then all of a sudden, one team stops them, and it just kind of snowballs from there. So it's not like this Kaprizov line has just suddenly turned like into a pumpkin, although it is what we are pointing out is that it seems like it has been way more Kaprizov and Zuccarello recently uh, with, uh, with Hartman essentially being along for the ride. And so does putting Eric Sinek on that line, um, does that jolt the offense even more? Does that uh, lead to, you know, having three legit scoring options on that top line? Does that third line lose some of their edge by having Hartman as center with Felino and Greenway? I think it would impact, and it's hard to say, I I think both lines would be impacted, and so I don't know if at least in the short term, if it makes sense to, you know, go get and, and maybe it ends up being as simple as if you go get a Claude Giroux and the Boldy Fiala Goudreau line continues to produce and Freddie continues to be a big part of that. Maybe that center upgrade is for your top line. And uh, you just move Hartman down a little further in the lineup. Uh, and uh, you let Giroux center Kaprizov and Zuccarello. How fun would that be? Um, I, I don't know. It's it's hard to say because, you know, as, as I've mentioned this season, if Kaprizov and Zuccarello are scoring, like, and that top line continues to to do that, then it's hard to make a case for any sort of changes. Uh, and so I think the Calgary games are going to be a huge indicator as to if we do need to do some juggling center-wise or, or if guys can get back on track on their own and uh, you just chalk it up to kind of an off performance uh, against the Maple Leafs. If not then yeah, I think we maybe get to the point where we start to move some of those centers around. Because th that's the nice thing, is that four of your top six are set. Because you're not you're not going to pull Zuccarello off of the Kaprizov line. You're not going to pull Boldy off of the Fiala line. You just may be sw switching the centers that are uh, getting them the puck. So keep an eye on that heading into the weekend or the Calgary game, if the face-off numbers continue to be an issue. And if, you know, we, if we get through maybe another quiet game from Ryan Hartman, then, um, then maybe Dean Evison has some things to consider um, as this season continues to progress. So all in all, some, uh, some good things to pull from the Maple Leafs game. But at the end of the day, despite, a uh, despite a better effort, still a loss in the standings for the Wild, and so they will try to get back on track against the Calgary Flames on Saturday. And that is going to wrap it up for today's episode of Locked on Wild. So now that your first listen of the day is done, make sure you head over to the Locked on Fantasy Hockey podcast. Hosts Steel Roden and Flip Livingstone help you become the expert of your fantasy league. Locked on Fantasy Hockey is free and available wherever you get your podcasts. Just like Locked on Wild, we're available anywhere you listen, anytime you want to listen. So search for Locked on Wild to find your favorite podcast platform and see if Locked on Wild is available there for you. You can also follow us on social media. Huge, huge unveiling announcement coming up on Sunday for uh, what we have been teasing here at Locked on Wild for, it seems like, weeks some interesting social media content that you will be able to be a part of. 
coming up for you starting on Sunday. So keep an eye out for that. Keep an eye out for any other Minnesota Wild related news, because if any sort of news story breaks or a puck drops in the state of hockey, Locked on Wild has you covered with new episodes every Monday through Friday as part of the Locked On Podcast Network.